left to right scale. Now, of course, this is a very narrow view. It doesn't serve to capture the broad array of political beliefs held by Americans today. We have a liberal body of thought and a conservative body of thought in America that are very strong and diametrically opposed. The best explanation I've ever heard for how we got to this sort of sad state of affairs comes from Professor Lakoff at UC Berkeley in his book, Don't Think of an Elephant. And he was looking at a conservative platform and all their issues and going down the list and going, this is ridiculous. There's, there's no unifying principle here. There's nothing that ties these together. It's just a random jumble of ideas and, and, and positions. And it doesn't make any sense. And then he had his eureka moment and said, wait a second. I believe in the exact opposite of every single one of those. Therefore, everything I said about that as a platform must apply to me. And so he was able to step back and analyze it for a second. And his theory is that things have developed based on two different views of the family, namely the strict father figure model of family and the two parent nurturing model of family. Of course, you know, that kind of favors the, the liberal position, but it does do something to explain how we got to this point. But it, there's a big problem because, and this is why it doesn't serve as well. The United States is a republic, not a family. Great nation, great principles, we have a lot of things that unite us. However, we are not a family, and more importantly, our government is not a parent, nor should it ever try to be. So, a better way of looking at this, of course, is through the political diamond. When you add this axis. Now, this is based on the world's smallest political quiz, which you can get from the Advocates for Self-Government. This is by uh, a guy named David Nolan. And the way that this works then, is you have uh, statists down here and libertarians up here. And what these two axes represent are how much you believe people should have economic freedom, <laughs> if I'm not dyslexic tonight, economic freedom, and over here, personal freedom. So, if you believe that the government should control everything, and you should have no economic freedom, and no personal freedom, you score zero on the, on the quiz, the world's smallest political quiz for both, you're down here. You're a status, or in other words, fascist. But now, if you believe that individuals should have all of the economic freedoms here, you score 100 on this scale, but zero on the personal freedom, that would make you an extreme conservative and put you over here. If you believe that everybody should have personal freedom, but no economic freedom, that would put you over here. So, if you score 100 on personal freedom and 100 on economic freedom, that puts you there. You're a libertarian, 100 percenter, right? So, the extreme ends of this axis, however, are down here, you could have totalitarianism, up here you would have anarchy, right? absolute harmonious interaction without any threat use of force uh, or governance by threat use of force. So, by, with, with this scale though, you can plot people all over it and the way it's usually broken down is that you have the moderates here, you have your conservatives here, liberals here, uh, your statists here, and your libertarians here. The thing is, most people are a lot more libertarian than they know, and even if you're a moderate, uh, you look at the way the Democrats and Republicans are, because really Democrats are closer there, Republicans are somewhere down there. Now, most really enthusiastic Democrats would like to think, you know, that they're somewhere over here, and most enthusiastic Republicans would like to think that they're somewhere over here. But it's clear that their, their parties are not representing them. So you could have your, uh, you know, you could have your neoconservatives somewhere over here, and you know that they're the ones really running the show in a lot of ways right now. So. Even if you're a moderate, you'd be a lot better served by a moderate libertarian or a principal libertarian who doesn't believe in pulling out the rug from underneath anyone that we need to be weaned off of the government than you would, than you would be by a Democrat or a Republican or a neoconservative. The economic freedoms and personal freedoms are really inseparable. And as Ron Paul himself has said, liberty is the principle that unites us. And so the much more important scale here is obviously this one. important thing to remember is that this axis about freedom from governance, freedom from violence, freedom from coercion, and the threat and use of force as a means of oppression is much more important than this one, which is really, really petty by comparison. 
So if we can remember that as a species, as humanity, and as a country, America is making progress from fascism to freedom, although right now we may be in the middle of a, a big step back in a process that is two steps forward and one step backwards. We are making this progress, and by taking this, this broader view of things, we can be united in our cause of liberty, and we can make that progress as a species, as a culture, and as a country in the United States of America.